thank you for coming out on this hot day, on this last Sunday of June. I'm glad to see you. I know you are all glad to see each other. Hallelujah. So as we go start our service today, let us stand as we go before the throne of grace to God today. Amen. Amen. We came here to worship God and give him praise. We done been through some, through some things. Amen. We done been through some things. So we want to lift him up and give him praise and honor. Father, we just thank you today, God. Thank you, Lord, for another day that we've never seen before. Thank you for our health and our strength, God. Thank you for allowing us to be able to be breathe a, a breath of life, to be able to walk on our own, God. Thank you for allowing us to be able to get here safely on, on another day, God. Thank you for blessing our families, God. Thank you for allowing our homes to be safe while we come into the service, God. Thank you, Lord God, to bless the ones that are yet on their way, God. Thank you, Lord God, to bless the ones, Lord God, that can't get here for one reason or the another, Lord God. So bless the ones that are looking at social media right now. Let them put their hands to the screen if they have to, or hold their phone up to their heart and their hands, Lord God. Oh, Father, bless them, Lord God, both near and far, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for blessing them. You know what they're going through. You know what's going on in their life. But Father, we ask for your grace. We ask for your mercy, Lord God, to bless the ones that need to hear from you today. Hallelujah. Bless them, Lord God. Oh, Father, bless our nation today, God. Oh, Father, we go and do some things in this nation. But we know that you will never leave us or forsake us. We have the guarantee, God, how much to love us. Because you died on the cross for us. So we just thank you. We're grateful, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Psalm 95 says, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him. Let me say that again. Hallelujah. Let us make a joyful noise unto him. For the Lord is great God, a great king above all God. Hallelujah. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his. He made it. And the hand food and dry land. Oh, come. Let us worship the Lord and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord. For he is our God. Hallelujah. And we are his people of his pasture and the sheep of his land. Today, today, if you hear his voice, let us continue to praise him. That is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Hallelujah. Let us continue to worship him. He's worthy to be praised.
should have to do besides praise them this afternoon. The only requirement for you this afternoon is to praise him, to worship him, because he's worthy of it all. He's worthy of it all. Can we just take a few more seconds and just give our Lord our best praise? Can you give the Father your best praise? You may be hurting in your body, but he still deserves your best praise. You may be hurting in your mind, but he still deserves your best praise. We mention his courts with thanksgiving. Father, rest in this place. Move how you want to move, God. Move how you see fit, God. We don't have an agenda this afternoon. We don't come with an agenda this afternoon. We just came to worship. We just came to worship. We just came to worship you, God. We cry holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. We cry Just 
what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. He's 
Somebody woke up dead this morning on the other side of eternity. Hallelujah. They didn't plan on it, but we're here still in the land of the living. And my Bible says, let everything that have breath do what? Praise the Lord. So we welcome you, hallelujah, into this place. Amen. Amen. Those out there on social media, I'm Executive Pastor Marcus Page, and we welcome you. Hallelujah. This is Face to Face Worship Center. Where we believe in ushering you intentionally into the presence of the Lord. That's our mandate. That's our call. And I hope you feel the presence of the Lord out there because we feel him in here. I know I brought him with me. Hallelujah. I don't need no rock. I'll never have a rock to cry out for me. I don't need a tambourine, I don't need a drum, I praise God for the instruments, but I got an instrument right here. This was the original instrument the Lord gave us, hallelujah, and I'll use it to the best of my ability to give him praise, to give him all the glory, and to give him all the honor, because he is due all of it. And as the psalmist declared, if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't praise him enough for all the wonderful things that he has done. But with this one tongue and with this one mouth, I'll bless his name. I'll bless him in the morning, in the midday, and in the evening. I'll bless him when I have, and even when I have not. I'll bless him, hallelujah, at all times, at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. Welcome. I hope you feel welcome. Amen. 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 Would you turn to your neighbors and would you welcome your neighbors real quick? Hallelujah. Come on, can we family? Can we stand up and welcome your neighbors? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, it's good to see you. Some of you haven't seen all week. Hallelujah.
love the Lord on today. Come on, come on, come on. Don't fool me now. How many really love the Lord on today? Amen. I really love him. I really love him. I really love him. Words can't describe. And my vocabulary is not deep enough to really express how I feel about the Lord. I really love him, y'all. I really do love him. I really, if you don't ever do another thing for me, I love him, y'all. I really love him, y'all. I love the Lord. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Can we just worship, we worship the Lord? Hallelujah. Everything. Can we stand to our feet? This is a good place. This is a good place, everybody, everybody. We praise you. prepare your offering, please join us in making this declaration over your finances. The declaration will also be scrolling across your screen. Now repeat after me. I walk in financial abundance. God supplies all of my needs, 
not half of them, but all of them. Satan, take your hands off my finances. Finances, I command you to be loosed from the world system. Because I give tithes and offerings, I am blessed and not cursed. Therefore, God will see to it that I always have more than enough for myself and to bless others. There are several ways to give here at Face to Face Worship Center. Givelify, look for Face to Face Worship Center. Cash App, there's a dollar sign, F2FWC, our website at F2FWC.org and click the donate link or you can text F to FWCGIVE to 1888-364-4483 and give your offering there. Father, we thank you for the generous giving of these your people. We pray according to Luke 6 and 38. As your people give, give back unto them. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give back unto them. May this be their season for a financial windfall in Jesus' name. While they're coming, there is an announcement. On July the 13th, Outreach in Reach will have a blessed wash day for the community. That's on the 13th of July. Amen. At 12 o'clock, excuse me. 13th of July at 12 o'clock, Outreach in Reach will have a blessed wash day for the community. We are asking all partners to donate $10 to give out to the participants. Thank you in advance for your liberal giving. If you have any questions, please see Minister Ramona. At the laundromat, excuse me. At the laundromat. We're going to meet here at the church at 1130. Okay, we're going to meet here at 1130. Amen. Amen. Now, how many are ready for the word of God? Yeah. Amen. How many need a word today? Amen. Can we stand to our feet as our pastor comes? Pastor Tony and Xavier Page. Hallelujah, praise is comely for the upright. Hallelujah, praise is comely for the upright. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, y'all need to invest in these little fans. Y'all see where I got mine, right? All right, all right. Go ahead while you're standing on your feet. Turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. It is good to see all of you here in the house of worship. Those of you that are watching via social media, God bless you. We are so glad that you are with us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. How many of you glad about Jesus? I mean, you're really glad about Jesus. It could have been another way, right? Hallelujah. But he was so gracious and faithful to save our lives. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The goal today is to teach this series for the next couple of weeks. So uh, I need you to have your pen, your pad ready, and I need you to, to be ready to take copious notes. Some of this may be rehearsal for you. Some of this you may rehearse. You may already know, and some of this I believe God's going to give us revelation. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Please look and see if your neighbor, your brother, your sister has his or her Bible so you can share, share your word again. I'm Pastor Tony Page, the uh, lead pastor, I was going to say the executive pastor, the lead pastor, face-to-face -face worship center. And so I'm so grateful that you all are here and we made it. How many of you glad you made it? Hallelujah. Woke up to see another day. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to be um, starting off out of the King James Version, but there's several verses that I'm going to read in this lesson. So y'all just flow with me. If you got your pen, your pad, and your paper, or your iPad, you can write down the scripture if you can't 
read it quickly enough for me. Or with me, should I say. Amen? Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 out of the King James. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Well. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now faith. Faith is never past tense. Oh God. I, the Holy Spirit just said to me, and faith is not even in the future. So when you grab a hold to faith, well, whatever you're believing for by faith is not in the future. I can sit down off of that, y'all. Now faith. Now faith. Now faith. Father, we ask you to bless us. Bless this lesson. Bless your people that we may be conduits of your word. Let not your word fall to the ground, but let it bring forth the harvest in season. We bind every enemy um, that's been sent to sabotage us this afternoon to keep us from hearing your word. Father, your word, your word, your word, planted in our hearts that we may not sin against thee. We thank you that your word will not return void, but it will accomplish what you send it to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just before you take your seat, just tell your neighbor, your sister, your brother, he's going to be talking about five elements of faith. Tell your other neighbor, five elements of faith. You may be seated. Now faith. Now faith. That alone, y'all. Now faith. Now faith. So whatever you're hoping for, you're wishing for, you're believing for, when you put faith to it, it becomes now. In this series for the next few weeks, we, we will be unfolding, Pastor Marcus, five elements that we must understand about faith. Particularly if we're going to operate in faith and live the abundant life that Christ died to give us. So it's first important that we understand Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to him first must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So if I and you are to please God, we can only do it by faith. Your praise does not bless him if it's not connected to faith. Your speaking in tongues doesn't make a difference if it's not connected. Your offering, your giving, your work, your ministry, your call, none of it makes a difference if it's not tied to faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So why is it impossible to please God without faith? Tell us. It is impossible to please God without faith because faith is the avenue by which we come to God. So faith becomes the pathway, the avenue, the street that we walk on to get to God. And then once we've gotten to God, we got to trust God for our salvation. Come on. It's a little alarming that we believe God for salvation, but we don't believe God for anything after salvation. I believe him to save me, but I don't believe him to heal my body. You better say so. I believe him to save me, but I don't believe him to make a way out of no. It's impossible to please God without faith. 
But what's beautiful about this faith thing is that he provides the very thing we need to create faith. <laughs> Glory to God. It's, it's not like I got to figure out what faith is. It's not like I got to figure out how I'm going to get faith. Are y'all with me so far? <laughs> but when we talk about faith, it references, and this is how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing. But hearing is connected to his word. So faith is not just hearing. Uh-oh. I just messed y'all up. How many things do we hear? Well. How many things did you hear before you came here? Right? Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing. By the word of God. Now, we, you, you, this, is, this is what's key here. And mind y'all, my, my, my objective is not to preach, but to teach. So, so when I start getting wound up, y'all say, Pat, uh, Pastor, calm down, cool out, chill, bring it back in. I give y'all permission to. All right. <laughs> Minister Sherry said, let the Holy Ghost. You cannot separate God from God's word. The word is God. And God is his word. John. 1-1, one, one, yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. All right. So we got to understand that God is his word and his word is God. But not only is God his word and his word is God, Matthew 5, 18 tells me that his word is eternal. Oh, yeah. 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 So if I'm to believe him, and believe his word and his word does not change no matter how much change is going on in my life if I believe God and I believe his word guess what what he said is what it is Matthew 5 18 says for verily I say unto you till heaven and earth pass not one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass. My God. Not one jot or tittle. Not one dot, thank you, Pastor, or cross shall pass. Because his word is eternal. So because his word is eternal and you can't separate him from his word, we understand that his word is settled. What makes God's word settled? What make, and, 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 and you, so in class, when, you're, when the teacher's teaching, you can talk back. They can't see your faces on social media, but you can talk back. What makes God? What makes God's word settled? He said it. He said it. He said it. Because, and I'm, I'm hearing all these wonderful answers. It's absolute. He said it, but I actually gave it to you in Matthew five eighteen. It's eternal. Amen. Let me tell you what settled means. It doesn't change. It doesn't move. It doesn't vacillate. It doesn't, it doesn't go up and it doesn't go down. It's steady. It's consistent. It's unchangeable. And so it's immutable. It doesn't change. Although my situation keeps changing. But his word stays settled. Y'all follow me so far, right? So because his word is settled, it's eternal. We also learn in Hebrews eleven six that it's this faith that pleases God. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. Can I tell you what that word please means in the Greek? 
It means to, and I need y'all, I, I don't see everybody with your pad. I see some with your recording, and that's cool. But I need you to I need you to get these nuggets so when you go home, you can write it down. You can you can look back at it. This word, please in Greek, means to gratify God entirely. Wow. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. To gratify God entirely. <laughs> that God is entirely pleased by my faith. You can't please him without it. That he is gratified, satisfied, filled up. With our faith. In other words, God is not pleased or gratified without faith. But with faith. But the other thing that's interesting in, 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 in this in this sixth verse of Hebrews 11. Did you notice the word must? There is, the, there is no um, variable. It's, it's, it's not an equivocation about what God requires. He requires our faith. You and I cannot serve God without faith. If we're going to come to God, we can only come to him If we're going to receive anything that he has for us, we receive it. So we must believe that God is everything that he has said he is. Right? That he is my father. That he is my mother when I need one. That he is my sister. That he is my brother. That he is my provider. Any and everything that we need him to be because he told Abraham, he told Moses, I am your God, my God, our God meets all of our needs. He's, he's in the Old Testament, he's called El Shaddai, the breasted one. The one who nurtures, who provides, who gives us everything that we need to sustain us. So if he's everything I need, where's the lack coming from? If he's everything I need, where's the worry coming from? If he's everything I need, why are you in me? Oh, you think it's because of your money. But no, he said, I'm, I'm away. I'm the truth and I'm the light. He said, I'm able to provide all that you need. I'm Jaira. Thank you. He's all that we need. But when you look at faith, Elder D, he doesn't call he doesn't want us to wander to try to figure out the definition of faith. So the text that I read to us earlier, Hebrews 11 and 1, gives us definition. In the Living Bible, faith is described as the confident assurance. How do you put confident and assurance together? Faith is that confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us. Oh my God. That what you are believing God for because it's in your now, it's waiting for you to get it. It went over your head. It went over your head. What you're believing God for, because it's in your now, he's waiting for you to get it. He's 
waiting on you to get it. Because he already provided. It, 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 it's, he's, he's, he's waiting. So confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us even though we cannot see it up ahead. Yes, My Lord, help us, Lord. Now, y'all know I like to dissect and define and understand words. Confident assurance. Confidence speaks to confidence. And y'all want to know what confidence is in Greek? It means foundation. Confidence in Greek means foundation. Well, what is foundation? Well, Webster says the lowest foundation is the lowest loading bearing part of a building. It is typically below ground level, building the arch that causes the building to rest on it. The lowest loading bearing part of a building below ground level causing the building to be able to rest on it as a solid foundation. Could you be topsy-turvy and stressed out and confused and worried because you are on the wrong foundation? Could you be resting on what your, your brother said, what your sister said, what the bank told you, what the doc? <laughs> and you know what happens when you're on a shaky foundation? Is that why your life is so shaky? Because your foundation is not on his word. Your foundation is on something else. And the foundation that his word provides is so solid. I just told you, heaven and earth shall pass. So what does that mean about faith? Faith, Pastor Marcus, is the foundation, Sister Eartha, that undergirds your hope. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but hope believe. On Christ, the rock I stand. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> 
Glory to God. Oh, Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy. That word holy means completely. All of me. That means my will. That means my emotion. That means my mind. That means my money. That means my honey. Holy lean on Jesus' name. No other name given unto heaven whereby we can be. All right, all right. Let me calm my little self down. Your faith is foundational. Your faith is what you're supposed to be resting on. We're not supposed to be resting on how we feel, Uncle Phil. We're not supposed to be resting on what we think. So confidence is foundation. Help us, help us. But that word assurance. Confident assurance. That word assurance. And I love because when you when, when you study the word of God, you gotta really look at verbiage from the Greek and the Hebrew in order to get proper understanding. This word assurance is not the same definition in Webster that it is in Greek. This word assurance in Greek is translated as evidence. That my foundation creates my evidence. Assurance is translated evidence or proof. Now, I want you to understand something, why this is so important. Because, see, we always qualify proof with what we see, with what we hear, with what we taste, feel, and smell. But this word evidence is not connected to senses. This word, Dr. Hill, evidence is not connected to my senses. I hear y'all asking, well, what is it connected to? <laughs> His eternal word. Yes. Oh, See, this, I'm going to share with you all. Wow. This is where many of us slip up yes. and stumble. Yes. Because what we do, we attach evidence to senses. Y'all yes. right. right. follow me? Yes. Yes. And because we have attached um, evidence to senses we miss that the evidence is the proof and the proof is his word so Holy Spirit just gave this to me so if you're going through something and that something you're going through is causing you to question the validity of his word the accuracy of his power his isness I want you all to do me a favor the next time I want you to Go outside. I want you to go outside and all I want you to do is look up. And I want you to see the stars if it's nighttime. If it's daytime, I want you to look at the sun and begin to think it's still up there. It's still, what's holding it up? What's keeping the sun shining? What's keeping the stars from falling? It is the evidence, the proof, his word. And glory to God. Glory to God. His creation is constantly telling us. Don't pick up the phone and call your sister or your brother and look for a word of encouragement. Let God's creation testify of his isness. And if you get a chance to get by some water, just go and look at the water. Oh my God. I love water. Just go to the go to the lake. Go to Haynes Point or, or we got different places here of water. And and Potomac uh, Potomac what? 
Potomac River. I, my, my mind went immediately, immediately to Potomac Mills. God is still delivering me. But just go, go look at some water. I can, I can go. The other day, I have a pond in my community. And I was able to just go to the pond and look at the water as it rippled. And then we have we have a, 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 a community where they, they put ducks in the water. And so not only did I see the water as it rippled, but then I saw the ducks, one of God's creations, one of God's beautiful creations. And I looked at how they weren't sinking under the, under the water. It's like they were walking on the water, but actually they were swimming under the water. Am I making sense? So when, you, when, you, when you're questioning what's going on, go outside and look at proof. Proof. If somebody comes to you and says, how do you know God is? You ain't got to go through Genesis to Revelation. You ain't got to misquote because if you misquote, they probably going to look it up and say, you don't know what you're talking about. Just say, hey, come with me. Come here. Come here. You see that star? Well, How do you think it's hanging up there? You see the, 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 the moon in its brilliance. And even how the moon as the earth. Wait, 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 wait. As the earth, Elder Mary, rotates. How when the earth rotates, I don't fall off. You don't fall into the abyss. How, can, we can't even feel the earth moving. And it's moving, right? So your faith is your, is your foundation and your faith. So then why is faith important for the believer? Well, Because faith causes the believer to act on what they believe. I'm going to tell you all the problem. And I'm, I'm actually going to stop in five minutes. I'm just wetting your appetite. Watch. I, I, know, I see your face, Elder Mary, but watch. Because y'all, it is a little hot up here. One of the other challenges we have, Dr. Hill, with faith, and I'm, and I'm, I'm going to pose it to you in the form of a question. When you say you have faith, what are you believing for or in? What is the object of your faith? What is the object, Sister Trudy, with the heavy eyelids? We're glad you're here. What, in, in, in love, I ain't call her out. A couple of y'all got hot, heavy eyelids. She told me she was tired, but she made it. She's here. And even with closed eyes, her ears are open. So wait, wait, wait. So what is the object of your faith? What is the object of your faith? Nobody's answering. I'm asking. What is the object of your faith? What is the object of your faith? I love y'all church answer because you all are right. You're, you're right. The object of our faith is supposed to be God. Supposed to be. But most of the most of us, the object of our faith is the thing we're believing God for. Oh, I believe God for a new car. And then you don't get the new car. And you stop believing God when well, you never believed him. 
you were believing for the car, yeah. not the God who provides yeah. the car. Yeah. When we look at Abraham, Abraham's faith was not in becoming a great nation that God told him he would be. The Bible says in Romans that his faith was counted to him as righteousness. Why? Why? Not because he believed he was he was going to have a, be a nation. Not because God was going to give him a child from his wife's barren womb. He was counted as righteous because the Bible says he believed God. Though he didn't have sense proof. He had evidence proof, which was God's word. That became the proof of God doing it. So could we not be getting what we're believing for. Because we're believing for it. And not believing God who provides. My Lord. My Lord. Yeah that's good. And so because I don't want to convolute that. This series, we're going to walk through five elements. <coughs> Hearing, receiving, believing, speaking, and acting. Please. Hearing. So, and, and, and I want you to understand, this is literally the sequence of faith. Hearing. Receiving, yeah. believing, yeah. speaking, and acting. Notice where believing comes into play. In the middle, number three. Faith starts with hearing. Hearing, receiving, believing, speaking, and acting. You ready? See you next week. Let's stand. here standing at the door always open to giving what he promised and, and Sister Terry one of the things that, 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 that as I'm, and, and, and I'll share with you Pastor Mark has actually ignited this series from his lesson last week Water Walkers because we want to walk on water we want to do great things in faith but we don't have faith. We have good feelings. We have large hopes and wishes and dreams. But we don't have real faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by his word. Next week when we deal with hearing, there's two ways to hear. I ain't going into it. Because I, I ain't going to give you too much. But if we are going to be the overcomers that he's called us to be, we got to start living by our faith. One of our challenges with, with, with the vicissitudes of life is we waver back and forth. But we serve a God who is solid. And I don't beat us up because we waver back and forth. I just bring it to our attention to ask you, what are you focusing on? Because if you're focusing on something that's temporal, you're going to go back and forth. 
But if you're focusing on something that's eternal, and truth be told, we can't comprehend it eternal because we're creatures of time. None of us know what eternity looks like. We have no point of reference. We've never seen it. But I'll share this with you all. Time is just a little cylinder on the channel of eternity. Time is about that much on the cylinder of eternity. Because once time is no more, eternity still remains. Why is that important? That's the God we serve. And so I want to challenge you. If you know you're struggling, wavering in your faith, come let us agree with you. My faith with your faith. I'm not believing in your faith. I'm believing in God. I'm believing in the God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I can ask or think according to the power that works in me. And the power that works in me is the power that's connected to his word. What a word. And now you have an opportunity to make a decision about what you just heard. Those of you who are watching who have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior, today is your day. God desires to make you a vessel for his glory. I know I need his help and why he is Lord of my life. If you know you need his help and you want him to be Lord of your life, will you pray this prayer with me? I repent, Father, of all my sins, known and unknown. I'm sorry, Father, for, for the wrong I've done against you. And I confess I need you and want you to be Lord of my life. Forgive me and come into my life and make me new and be my Savior and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to text SAVE to 202 519 9518 and we'll follow up with you my sister my brother welcome to the family of God we want to share some more information with you so text us these are some of the things we have going on at face to face worship center every Tuesday evening at 7 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time join us for our zoom Bible study you don't want to miss this interactive time of intuitive study of God's Word Join us every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for in-person worship at 9121 Piscataway Road, Suite 4B, Clinton, Maryland, 20735, or virtual worship on all our social media platforms, Facebook Live, and our YouTube channel. We would love to see you in person or virtually. Our Our corporate intercessory prayer is every Wednesday and Friday at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us by dialing into our conference line at 319-527-4008. Come pray with us as we pray for the nation, the world, and you. There are several ways you can give here at Face to Face Worship Center. Givelify, look for Face to Face Worship Center. Cash App, F2FWC. Our website at www.f2fwc.org and click the donate link. Or you can text the word F2FWC give and the dollar amount to 1-888-364-4483 and give your offering there. All this information should be scrolling across your screen. If you prayed the prayer of salvation with us today, text SAVE to 202-519-9518 and we will contact you to provide more information about how to walk out your new relationship with Jesus Christ. Welcome to the family of God. If you are looking for a church home, join us. We are the place of intimate worship. 
where you can grow both spiritually and socially. For more information, text PARTNER to 202-519-9518, and we will send you more information about our ministry. Continued blessings, and we look forward to you worshiping with us again next Sunday.